Good morning. Welcome to The Takeover. I am your host, Keisha Breon, alongside the king of L.A. sports, Richard Lopez. And if you are looking for your daily sports fix, then you have come to the right place. How are you doing this morning? You know what? I'm looking good and I'm feeling good. So that's what they say. When you look good, you feel good. That's where I'm at today. Okay, well, thank I must feel good every day. Oh, yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. You're welcome. Today, we're going to talk about some NBA playoffs. We're going to talk about the Grizzlies and the Spurs, their game one. And we're also going to talk about what uh, matchups we, we should look for with the uh, Heat and Pacers series. Some key okay. matchups, what the Pacers may need to do in order to win the series, and whatever other uh, advice or suggestions that you can right. give those players to maybe take out the heat. I'll try to calm it down a little today, but we'll see what happens. Okay. See where this goes. Well, game one took place yesterday um, for the Spurs and the Grizzlies, and the Spurs defeated the Grizzlies 105 to 83. It was a complete blowout. Oh, yeah, it was a complete blowout. It wasn't even... But, you know, I looked into it and I was getting upset because I'm pulling for the Grizzlies right here, even <laughs> though they beat your Clippers. Yeah, no. You know. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm pulling for the Grizzlies and, you know, what can you say? You can't look too much into the game ones with the Grizzlies because they lost the game one with the Clippers. They lost game one with the Thunder. Mm -hmm. And they, they obviously lost game one yesterday. Mm -hmm. So you can't look too much into it. Um, Lionel Hollins is an excellent coach. Mm -hmm. Him and Popovich are going to be going back and forth with each other. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a nice chess game to watch. And I think the Grizzlies will come out a little bit with more firepower next week. They got shut down. Their big-time scorers got shut down. They definitely. Zebo was only held to two points, two so they points. definitely got shut down. Um, but just as much as you can't overlook the Grizzlies with game one, I think you can't overlook the Spurs because when the Spurs go up one game to nothing in the seven-game series, Popovich records is off the hook. He's only mm -hmm. beaten by uh, Phil Jackson and uh, the old Celtics coach whose win percentage is like uh, – 100 yeah. percent when um when winning that first game so the grizzlies are going to have their hands full especially if they continue to play the way they continue to play like you said zebo was completely shut irrelevant. down irrelevant non-existent they they pretty much shut him down in the paint um they were outscored 20 points in the first half gasol and conley put up some pretty decent and uh pondexter put up some pretty decent points yeah. 17 for pondexter uh, 15 for gasol and 14 for conley but that wasn't enough to stop the spurs with their offensive shooting expedition that they put on well, last night uh, pondexter was the leading scorer for the grizzlies mm -hmm. and he came off the bench he had that run where he was hitting a bunch of three-pointers in a row and uh, Conley, 14 points. Uh, mm -hmm. Gasol, 15 points. And Zebo, two points. I'm going to go back to that. You know, if San Antonio can get that, they're going to be having a good time this series. Mm -hmm. But I just don't expect that to happen. They were making Zebo go to his right side. And as if you watch he's him, a he's a lefty. And mm -hmm. they're making him go to his right side every single time. Mm -hmm. But you got it. Like I said, he's a, Lionel Hollins is a good coach. And Zach Randolph, they have to get him going. If he's irrelevant during the series, uh, the Grizzlies will be irrelevant during the rest of the playoffs because they go as far as Zach Randolph mm -hmm. takes them. And you're right. And what they did was they they boxed out Memphis in the paint, limiting their extra point uh, or extra possessions. I should say they had great ball movement. They doubled Zach, uh, went in the post, making sure when he did catch the ball, he was out of position. Um, so if they stick with that game plan, yeah, <laughs> it's it's over. It's over for Memphis. I'm sorry. They they need to get in there and make some adjustments. I um I personally think they need to protect the paint a little bit to get back into the series. Um and they need to come up with different defensive schemes. Um they need a better perimeter defense. They just have they just need to make a whole lot of adjustments. I don't even think the game plan they had was that bad. This is the problem. They uh, shut down no you see the, the big space? three. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> you can just listen. Hear me out. Okay. Hear me out. Tony Parker had twenty points. Tim Duncan had six points. And Ginobili didn't, I don't forget the exact number, he didn't have too many points. But this is what happened. The Spurs from the three-point line outscored the Grizzlies 42 to 15. 42 to 15. So Kawhi Leonard, he had went uh, four for five from the three-point line. Uh, Bonner went four for six from three-point line. And Danny Green had went um, three for six from the three-point line. Mm -hmm. So they outscored him 42 for 15 behind the three-point yeah, mark. 14, so, 14 three-pointers. Yeah, 14 three-pointers. Mm -hmm. And I just I don't see San Antonio keeping up that kind of shooting all the time. But the Grizzlies, I mean, if you're going to let those guys beat you, what else can you ask for? They shut down Duncan. Mm -hmm. And Parker had 20 points, which is okay. And Ginobili wasn't too much of a fact. Actually, they went to Gino Ginobili 
um, every time the game got close. Ooh, yeah, because the Memphis, did, they did bring it within six. Mm -hmm. um, within, I want to say, the third, was the third quarter? Yeah, the third quarter. Um, but once they once they did that, what, what did the, the Spurs, Spurs do? They came back with that three-point ball. Yeah, and, and they went on an 11-1 and one run to end the third quarter. Killed them. Not to mention the great ball movement. If we just want to go back to that for a minute, they had 28 assists on 40 <laughs> buckets. That's yeah. like 70% average. So... I'm sorry. I know you're going for Memphis, but I think the Spurs have this in six. You think so? Yeah. I say Grizzlies in seven. Okay. Well, we shall see. We, we shall see. see. We shall see. Now, let's move on to the next yes. um, matchup that we have in yeah. the East, which are the Heat um, against, the, or the Pacers against the Heat, I should say. And what do you think some key matchups are in this particular series? Um, key matchups is... Paul, well, obviously, uh, Paul George on LeBron James. Mm -hmm. If you look, um, looking up the statistics, LeBron averages 21 points against the Pacers, and that's his lowest average against any team in the NBA. Mm -hmm. So George, who did a, just finished doing a great job on Carmelo Anthony, or as great good, job, yeah, as good of a job as you can do on, Carm on Carm Carmelo Anthony, he's going to get the next task of taking LeBron. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm going for the Pacers. Mm -hmm. I don't want to actually you know what I'm gonna be vocal about it I think the Pacers are gonna take this and it's gonna be in a seven to six games mm -hmm. um, I just think Wade's it, it depends on Wade's injury if mm -hmm. he's really hurt I don't think LeBron can do it on his own mm -hmm. they need D Wade to come into these playoffs and like uh he was dancing on the, the the prom last weekend he did a good deed took a girl to prom hopefully he didn't injure that knee anymore you know, well, well I mean, it's good enough to dance on. It should be good enough to play on, right? right? Exactly. Okay. <laughs> so hopefully that's not a problem for the Heat. But yeah, I just that's my matchup right there is um, Paul George on LeBron James. Mm -hmm. That's going to be the big matchup right there. Okay. Well, I don't necessarily have a matchup. I believe in order for the Pacers to stand a chance against the Heat, they need to dominate defensively. Mm -hmm. That's what I. That's what I believe. The Pacers, they're the best uh, team in the NBA with rebounding with 46 per game, and what benefits the Pacers is that the Heat comes in dead last. Yeah. So that's something to look out for. They also need to limit the Heat's second chance opportunities and overwhelm there with their interior size. They play a very physical series. Mm -hmm. If you remember back to uh, last season oh, when they yeah. matched up, my it, favorite was, series last year. it was a lot of flagrant. It was a lot of technicals given out. And I think that the Pacers need to stick with that. You know, I think they need to rough LeBron up a little bit because – as shown in the Bulls series, when you rough him up, he goes off of his game. Mm -hmm. So they need to do that, but they need to do it smart. Yeah. You know, they don't need to be thrown out or, you know, get ejected or miss games with their with their physical play, but they just need to rough him up just enough to get in his head and get him, get him off his game. The most important player in this series is not LeBron James. Mm -hmm. It's Roy Hibbert. Mm. Roy I Hibbert, agree. if he stays out of foul trouble, mm -hmm. he's 7'2". That gives them the Pacers everything they need defensively. Mm -hmm. So if Roy Hibbert stays out of foul trouble, that gives the Pacers a great chance to win this series. Mm -hmm. They're not afraid of the Heat, mm -hmm. not at all. Not and at last all. year, uh, Frank Vogel got fined fifteen thousand dollars for saying the Heat are the biggest flopping Floppers. team yeah. in the <laughs> NBA. Which uh, he might have a point, you know, because if he didn't have a point, the fine might have been like fifty thousand. <laughs> but since he kind of told the truth, they probably dropped it a little bit. So. Well, yeah. I actually I actually agree with you with the Hibbert. I, I believe Hibbert and West in the paint will be the Pacers' biggest weapons if they're able to come up with offensive and defensive rebounds. I also believe that George Hill, Lance Stevenson, and Paul George are also key because of what they need to do is hold uh, James and Wade um, to that low player efficiency uh, rating that they've done with previous opponents throughout the year under 14. If they can do that, if they can manage to do all these things, they have a good chance at winning the series, I think. Yeah. In seven, I don't think they're going to, you know – go in five or six. I think it's going to be a seven-game series. Regardless of who wins, I think it's going to be a seven-game series. Yeah, the Pacers were my uh, sleeper pick out of the East, and they're there. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're exactly where I thought they'd be. And this year, I think they learned from last year's mistakes, and I think mm -hmm. they pulled off. They'll find a way, hopefully, to keep Hibbert out of foul trouble. Mm -hmm. um, David West, you know, he'll play his leadership role, mm -hmm. and I expect them to do good in this series, better than they did last year. Yes. And uh, Frank Vogel, he's not keeping his mouth shut this year no, either. No, he's not. He just, uh, in an interview, he happened to say that the Heat are just another team standing in the way of the Pacers and the NBA title. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, I see both sides of that. Mm -hmm. You know, LeBron took it the wrong way and said, we're far from another team, we're a great team, this and that. But what's Frank Vogel supposed to say? That, is he supposed I to agree. explain to his players, like, okay, everyone, we, we should be nervous. We, this is right. the Heat. We need to do things no, differently. No, not at all. it's a basketball game. You take away the aura of the Heat, then you just play straight basketball. They're a talented team, mm -hmm. but you take away all that surrounds them, the hype. It's just basketball. I agree, my friend. Yeah, so I it's going to be a very interesting week coming up. I know. I can't wait. Yeah, I can't wait either. Okay. So.
Well, that is all that we have for you today. Uh, Rich, why don't you sh uh, set up all your YouTube and... Oh, okay. <laughs> Where are we at? Okay. This is the King of go. LA Sports, Richard Lopez. You find me on my YouTube channel, The King of LA Sports. You can find me on Instagram, The King of LA Sports. You can find me on Twitter, Rich Lopez, K-O-L-A-S-C. You can find everywhere. And you can find me <laughs> everywhere. Website coming soon. And thank you all for watching. And Miss Brian. And I am Keisha Brian. You can find me at YouTube at Keisha Brian. We thank you very much for joining us here at the Takeover. And until next time, may the sports be with you. And don't be afraid to roll the dice. <laughs>